Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what happens if you're a fearful avoidant attachment style and find yourself leaving relationships too early, whether it's a friendship, a family member relationship, or of course, a romantic relationship. So this is actually something I see that happens a lot. And I notice that fearful avoidance sort of have a tendency at times to kind of jump the gun on things. And this, in my opinion, is actually rooted in a trauma response, like a flight response that's coming online. We know that we have our four trauma responses, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn, um, which is sort of like your people-pleasing mode. And I find that fearful avoidants actually tend to sort of have relationship to all four of those major trauma responses. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to start paying attention to the difference between when it's time to leave um, and something's not working and you're setting a healthy boundary versus you may be having a trauma response that causes you to jump the gun too early and then maybe regret pushing somebody away later or feel like it was an overreaction and then it can actually do some damage long-term to a relationship. So let's start by talking about it for a moment. One of the first differentiating factors between if it's time to actually leave something or if you are having a strong response to leave that may be more rooted in like an emotional reaction is did you try to resolve the problem first? Something I've seen over and over and over again with fearful avoidance and it was something that I actually struggled personally with as a prior fearful avoidant about 12 years ago or so in my past past relationship um, is um, pushing somebody away without communicating first. And this is something that I noticed fearful avoidance do a lot. And it's because in, at a deeper level of the subconscious mind of a fearful avoidant, there's this concept or idea that says, oh, if I communicate, I'm not going to get my needs met anyway, so why bother? And that's not a conscious thought. That's not like a logical process where the fearful avoidant thinks, oh, well, maybe I should try it or something like that. These are your conditioned patterns. And they usually come from at some point in childhood or in a previous relationship, you try to express needs and communicate and they were met with absence, right? They were met with like a rejection, a denial, being ignored, something in some form. And it conditioned you to believe, to assume essentially that, oh, my needs aren't gonna get met anyways. So what I see all the time is fearful avoidance hold things in, won't speak about them, won't set a boundary, won't communicate that they need support or need something. And then all of a sudden it builds up like a volcano kind of waiting to erupt. And then they sort of exit and they push somebody away and try to leave a relationship, leave a friendship, whatever it might be. But had they set boundaries first, talked it out, or tried to communicate more vulnerably about their needs, a lot of times the person they were with would have cared about them enough to um, show up or try to do something differently or like work something out with them. And so it's a really important distinguishing factor. Did you try to talk it out first? If the answer is no, it might have been um, more of like, I just left and I didn't really give the relationship or situation a chance. The other thing you can really look at is, did I push somebody away in a really heightened emotional state? That's obviously also indicative of a trauma response. Um, did I communicate just once and expect everything to go perfectly? And when it didn't, that's when I left. Because sometimes too, the reality of communication is somebody sort of has a conditioned way that they get used to relating to us. And so we have to sort of help recondition that pattern. If you're somebody, for example, who never had boundaries, and then you're suddenly trying to reinstate boundaries. And then let's say your partner on the receiving end of those boundaries is pretty good about them and responding to them most of the time, but sometimes they forget and accidentally kind of cross a boundary or ask for something that violates a boundary. You know, sometimes we have to have patience with that person too, because they at a subconscious level, when they're on autopilot, may used to be relating to us in a certain way. Now, of course, this is going to matter. Like what's the type of boundary? If it's like a very non-negotiable boundary in your life versus like, a boundary of like, hey, it's really important from this point on in the relationship that you follow through and you don't forget things. And yet somebody's still trying to remember to not be forgetful. Like, you know, there may be a, a time for leniency in those situations. Um, so I'm not saying that about all situations whatsoever. I know fearful avoidance when they feel like something's crossed can feel very strongly about it. And I get that. Um, but it's important to take these things into consideration. So it's a huge, um, Thing to pay attention to like did you relieve the, the did you leave a relationship too early 
and kind of lack staying power because you had this flight response that was more rooted in fear when there would have been an ability to really work something out. And sometimes this happens for fearful avoidance at work with cities they live in, with friendships they have, um, all sorts of different places. And what I actually find sort of happens in the background of the subconscious mind of the fearful avoidant is it's like things are building up consistently over time. It's like it's like resentment, frustrations get like stored and you may not even become consciously aware of it until you reach that tipping point. And then sometimes fearful avoidance will say too, um, you know, I didn't want to invest my energy in trying to work something out with that person. Like I, the imbalance in the relationship went on for too long. And so then they've sort of like built up so many negative associations and relationships to that person that when we have negative associations emotionally tied to something or someone, we just are wired after that to stay away from them. So if you are an FA and you notice this happens to you, it's something to be paying attention to. And it's really indicative of like needing to be better at proactive setting of boundaries and proactive com communication in the relationships around you. Because sometimes when it's too reactive, our conditioning is already to avoid that person. It can almost be too late. So if you want to do a deep dive into this, um, I have two courses that I highly recommend. Number one, um, our boundaries course. It's a deep dive in reconditioning your relationship to boundaries. It literally helps to solve for exactly this problem because when we have a good relationship to boundaries and we can assert ourselves in all these small ways throughout the day, we don't only set boundaries out of anger once it's too late, once we don't care to invest in the relationship anymore, out of resentment, like we actually learn to set boundaries in all the little ways throughout the day so that we feel like a boundary person. And if something's not going well in a relationship, we feel comfortable setting those boundaries, letting somebody know ahead of time. Um, and it will stop us from feeling like we have to flight to escape the discomfort of what's happening in the relationship. Instead, we can actually go towards it in, a, in an approach-oriented format in a healthy way to get our needs met within that sort of circumstance or dynamic. So I highly recommend that. Um, I also recommend if you want to do a deeper dive into your needs and just knowing your needs a little bit more in general so that you can get those needs met in relationships as well and feel comfortable knowing and communicating about what they are. And you can check out both of those courses for free for seven days using the link down below. And that second course is called Discover, Embrace, and fulfill your personal needs. But the link down below gives you free access to all of our courses. So you can check them all out. I also do four live webinars every single week with all of our students. I answer live questions, do bonus content webinars, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and on top of that as well, um, we have daily social events, community events, um, talks with other um, trained facilitators, coaches. So you can check those all out using the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.